Happy Easter, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking about the third season of The Chosen. Let's get started. So, we talked about the first two seasons. If you haven't seen those videos yet, go check out those videos so you can understand where I'm coming from with this third season because the fact of the matter is, those first videos are important to understanding my thoughts on the third season. Starting with the good, let's talk about I, the best thing about this, fir, this third season is that of Simon and his wife. For those who have not seen it, I will not spoil what happens, but there are some... The whole storyline, it's awesome, it really gets to the point where you're like, it was, at first, we don't understand what's going on, and then we learn more about it, and the moment that we figure out what happened, was the moment that I was like, the rest of the season was kind of like, okay, I mean, there were some good moments and all, there was a, there, I'll talk about another, another episode I like, but when, the moment you figure out what was going on, I'm like, this is the top notch of The Chosen, this is one of the best things in The Chosen, and I, what I really like about it is it does, without spoiling it, it does a great job with talking about how the grief that a father goes through too, and it's not just the mother, that had, that goes through grief. I really like that because the fact of the matter is, without spoiling it, you mean, even that are kind of already people who watch who watch this video and has not seen it prior can guess based on what I'm saying, the, what it's going on. But without saying, flat out saying it, the fact of the matter is that yeah, the father the father goes through grief too because there's always going to be a father's love. And with the whole conclusion, I'm I'm going to give you some insight into why I like the ending of the season so much. So, the day before I watched the finale of season three, I had a retreat the the day before, where I heard a bunch of talks, and one of the talks was talking about and the moment at the end of season three of the chosen. Of course, I didn't know that because that talk was put together years before The Chosen even existed, so they don't actually know what was happening at the end of The Chosen, but it's often the part of the Bible where that ending of The Chosen is at. And I remember for the whole talk, all I was thinking about is, I need to go and watch the finale of The Chosen. So it was not that the moment at the end of The Chosen was really, really good, but it was the moment that when I watched that finale, I felt like something about that finale was special just because for that whole talk talking about that topic I kept I kept getting this feeling of I need to finish the chosen so when I finished the chosen and it was dealing with that scene I was just like something I must like there's something I must get out of it this I mean there's something that the, the Holy Spirit was calling me to watch this finale and honestly it's a, it's a good finale it, it ends with a good point but it's not like it's incredible, it's not the best job, uh, the done job probably of that scene, but it was something special about knowing that I felt called to watch that season, that last finale episode. And it's not like, I wasn't being, I didn't have the back of my head that I needed to watch it, but it was something about like, I felt like that day there was something just saying, you, once you get home from this, like what, like this for a Sunday, because it was on a Saturday, this Sunday, Watch that finale. Next thing I like about season three is I don't know if you guys all remember for those of you who've seen the season, but Matthew in the first episode actually had a con uh, had a conversation with his parents. The fact of the matter is a lot of I completely forgot about that, and then I was start thinking over the season again. I'm like, wait, a second, that did happen in this season. But there was so much other stuff that happened later on in the season that I completely blanked off that that was happened in the first uh, in the third season. That in the third season, you have Matthew going back and apologizing to his parents, and his parents forgiving him, but also apologizing for kicking him out, for treating him badly because he became a tax collector, and admitting that they always loved him, even though he was doing something terrible with his life, and they wish he would turn back to God. But it was so, he, they thought it was amazing that he was now the Messiah had chosen him. To be one of his apostles and he was just, and they were just like oh my goodness this is incredible like we can now see that god has turned you away from this sinful life and now 
you are doing God's will and it's amazing very nice scene I really like it it's not the most incredible scene in the series but it was a scene that I, I really liked it and I forgot that it happened in season three the other good thing that happened in season three was the third episode the third episode in general there was some really good moments in it but especially what made this ep this episode so great was the moment that Jesus revealed that he was the Messiah and it was one of those like drop one of those moments of like, you know, like drop the mic type thing, where he's just like, I'm not here for vengeance. I'm here for salvation. It was one of those moments where I was like, I was watching it, and I was just suddenly just fell back. I'm like, oh my goodness, they just did it. They just had the first time where Jesus actually admitted in front of a crowd in public, said, I am the Messiah. He admitted, admitted bit, he had admitted it to people in private but that was the first time he ever admitted it in public to his own people saying and it was one of those moments where it was awesome because it was just like they all turned their back on him they were like trying to stone him and all that kind of stuff and it was like it was an incredible ending to that episode now there are a lot of problems in that episode that i will talk about in what's bad it's gone now this is what's wrong with the season three of the chosen Let's start with that episode three and deal with that whole issue. Things that stood out in season three, in episode three, there was like I'm gonna use episode three as an example, but it's really just something big with the whole series. Is number one, I am not gonna try to say that I have the best relationship with a mother Mary, but I am starting to try to grow in my relationship with Mary, and it's gonna it's starting to get annoying. The first season, I was kind of like, uh, well, at least they don't, they haven't destroyed her completely. And it was kind of like, she's not the best, but she's not terrible. She kind of works. But the further you get into the series, the more they're, they're starting to like, you know, destroy her now. And it's getting kind of annoying. Like, and then when I look back at the first season, it was still like, they were kind of a little bit, but now they're just starting to go more and more where it's just like, she's acting less like, the mother of Jesus, the mother of God, and all. And it's starting to more act like there's a random person who's also there. I mean, there's the moment where she's just like, where she's acting like she doesn't understand the plan that God has like planned for her son and all, which she does. I will not get into a whole topic about Mary and all that type of stuff in this video, but the fact of the matter is, as it has been explained before, she carried Jesus in her womb for nine months and God has revealed a lot of stuff to her but for those nine months she had the heart of God so close to her she out of everyone in if you read the Bible out of everyone in the Bible she's the one who understands what God is doing even that she's sad yeah he has to die on a cross he has to do all this she understands all that but the fact of the matter is she understands it and they they're starting to get to the point where it's feeling like she's less understanding what's going on and more just like a follower like the apostles she's not she is the mother of god she's the mother of jesus she is not god but out of everyone she's the one who understands what's going on the most they're starting to go further and further away from her understanding of what's going on she's starting to become more just like a normal human with falling blindly which is not true. That's not what Mary did. There's a reason why when Jesus went up to heaven, he had his mother take care of the apostles and his mother was up in the upper room at Pentecost. Why, when he was dying on the cross, one of his final words were, woman, behold your son. And then said to his beloved apostle, John, behold your mother. He was not saying, hey, you're gonna have to take care of her. He was, when he was saying, to her that she behold her son he was saying look at these the my followers you are going to have to be their mother you're going to have to lead them you're going to have to protect them and help guide them and to the day she died she was there guiding them after jesus left because she understood the heart of her son and so while they were give given the gifts of the holy spirit and they were given that they still needed the guidance of the person who understood him the most. The next problem is that of Jesus. As I mentioned in my in my video about Risen, and I said I would bring up 
in more detail in this video is the problem that the chosen does a great job with giving Jesus humanity, but they do not do a great job with giving him the godly side. He is fully God and fully man. And the fact of the matter is, as I said in that video about risen, I said that Jesus and the chosen is the type of person you would go to a barbecue with. He's fun, he's enjoyable, and Jesus is fully a man. But the fact of the matter is, he's also God. And the fact of the matter is, I cannot see that Jesus, uh, the Jesus and the chosen, like, I cannot see him as the king of kings. I cannot see him as God. I cannot, like, he's a great person. He's a person I would like to hang out with. But he's not the person I would turn to when I would, like, kneel down before and say, Forgive me, God, for I am a sinful man. I, he's, he doesn't seem like that person. He doesn't seem like God. He just seems like a man. The person you would go play ball with, but you would not turn to and say, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. On to some other things when it comes to that. When cinematography comes to me, and I will talk about if they improve the cinematography in a little bit, but one big cinematography thing that I didn't talk about in all the seasons, but I'm going to talk about now because it is an important thing. The problem with The Chosen is that they always film it in a way that draws your attention way away from it. They're like constantly moving the camera had the most bland music that just draws you away they keep moving the camera onto people and it's just like okay cool you're supposed to be showing like oh look how these people are understanding it but the fact of the matter is then they're kind of muffling what jesus is saying while they're doing that the music is louder than jesus so you don't understand what he's saying and honestly i know what happened on the sermon on the mount I know uh, all the moments of him preaching in the Bible. I get that. But if, if I actually want to let's go listen to those words, I have to go read the Bible. Because the fact of the matter is, maybe they're doing that on purpose that they're trying to draw people to go read the Bible instead. But the fact of the matter is, they should try on to make the Sermon on the Mount, all these like moments of preaching, make them interesting to watch. Like you have this, like, all the moments, you have this feeling of like, okay, so what is going on? The best moment of a moment of him preaching is actually not even when he's preaching up, is when he's preparing for the Sermon on the Mount. And when you hear the Beatitude, and you see moments of all the apostles. You see Mary Magdalene being comforted by Mary, the mother of God, and all. And showing how, you I mean, show mercy to those who have sinned, and show, like, bring them back in. You see all this, and it's just, that's the only moment that when he's actually saying that stuff, it actually works. But even, like... I know this is something that I saw in season two, like when he was reading, uh, when he was, when he was saying the All Father just randomly cut off before the All Father was over, and you were like, okay, so why, why is this the case? Are they just trying to get you to read the Bible instead? Are they just trying to draw you? Here's the Bible, read the Bible. But the fact of the matter is, you're gonna run into people who need to hear it. I don't know anyone who is saying the moments of him preaching is the best moments in the world because no, like. They always film it in a way that just seems like it's always drawn away from that. Like, you know, in the end, in episode, they have him preaching to the crowds and all. And you just have, you're paying attention to what's going on with the apostles and what's going on with the loaves and the fishes. You're paying attention to that and you're not paying attention to what he's actually saying. And it's just like, but it is important to understand what is going on. But like, his words that he's saying is just like, you have people saying, oh my goodness, what he said was so amazing. But what did he say? Did anyone actually pay attention to what he said? Because the cinematography, the people running the show didn't pay attention to what he was saying. They were too busy trying to show other things instead. The same topic of, you know, preaching and all. When he, when he sets the apostles off, right? I believe that is the fourth episode or the fifth episode that he sends them off in their own ways in... Uh, he sets them off into things uh, into sets of two. The problem is, I'm like, oh my goodness! So this episode is going to be like, because I think it was like in episode four, he told them that he needed to send them off, and then it was ending with episode four with they're going to be sent off, and then the beginning of episode five, I'm like, oh, episode five is just going to be dwelling on them getting sent out, and they're going to you're going to see them all preaching. It's going to be awesome. Instead, you have the first couple minutes they're preaching. 
And then it goes back to their known cities, you know, and it just skips past all that. Like, you had the moment where you could have seen them go on their first mission on their own in sets of two, see what they actually are talking about, but it's kind of just like flashing through all of them and just in a couple of minutes it's done. And I hate that. I hate how they did that because they had a great moment starting and they never took advantage of that. Like, the Chosen spend so much time building up these extra characters that they're now, we already set up who these characters are. We don't need to bother actually continuing to set up these characters, so let's set up new characters instead. The fact of the matter is they need to dwell on the characters they set up. Like, I want to see them actually take the things they learned from Jesus and actually talk about it. Instead, they just have it so everyone talked to, everyone said, oh my goodness, what they talked about was so great. What did they talk about? You have this whole like storyline going on that you mean one of the cities that two of them went to is in an uproar now because of what they talked about. That you hear from a second hand content, you hear from later on what they talked about there, but it was not that you actually saw them talking about it. It was that you heard after the fact Andrew being like, oh yeah, we talked about this. Why couldn't we just see them talking about it when they were there? Why? The fact of the matter is, they spend so much time just brushing past that. The fact, the thing is, I don't think there's, I think the Chosen is starting to get to that point where they're not understanding what the point of Jesus' mission was. Why did he come to Earth? The fact of the matter is, they spend so much time talking about these side characters that, oh yeah, he healed this person. That's awesome. But the fact of the matter is, he can't, yeah, he, he heals people, but he does it for the reason to help draw people to him. The fact of the matter is, the important thing is that these messages he's spreading, these parables he's telling, all this stuff, he's trying to draw people into that too. And the fact of the matter is, they spend so much time on the miracles that they're not dwelling on the teachings. And they could, there's people who probably never read the Bible who could, who are watching these, watching The Chosen, and you, could, you had the chance to tell them, to like preach to them, the good news, but you're choosing not to because you just want to be like, look, we can move the camera around. We can draw your attention to new things instead. That doesn't work. So another thing that's like, big about The Chosen in the season is, at least I know my sister and I, we're starting to get over the Chosen fatigue. The first season was like, this is incredible. How, like, how could they make a season so good? How could they make a series so good about the Bible? That's awesome. But then we're starting to get to that point where like, we're seeing the fault. I'm, at least I'm seeing the faults and I'm like, there's so much problems with this. And the same thing over and over again is never going to get anywhere. I want to see them go deeper. I want them to see them actually take the time to dwell on what did Jesus talk about? Not just saying, what Jesus talked about was great, so what did he talk about? Overall guys, have you guys seen Season 3 of The Chosen? If you haven't yet, I guess if you like the first few seasons, you might find it enjoy- You might find it enjoyable. It's not like a bad season, it's just- I think The Chosen is starting to get- At least I'm getting over The Chosen fatigue. I'm getting over that The Chosen must be good, because the fact of the matter is the, These are beginner writers, these are beginner directors and all doing this and they are doing a bad job the writing is getting worse but especially the cinematography it's still too dark and too bland looking the music is still terrible almost everything that was the problem in the first two seasons is still here and they're starting to destroy some characters like mary and like even jesus i'm feeling like they're getting nowhere with showing that he's actually the son of god Anyways, guys, if you guys haven't yet, please subscribe. This has been the Movie Nick Review. Peter Wary, signing off.